Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to learn what a game object is and what it's used for. Let's begin. So, a game object is the base class for all entities in Unity. In the scene hierarchy in here, you can create a new game object by right-clicking create an empty, which creates an empty game object, and in here, in the inspector, you can view the stats for an empty game object. You can rename the object either directly in the scene hierarchy in here, so my game object, or you can also rename it in this text box in here. So let's name this object Sprite. As you can see, it updated in there. Okay. Up here, you can choose an icon for your game object, which will make it very easy to find in your scene. So select an icon, and as you can see in here in the scene, the icon is visible and it contains the name of the game object. If you're working in 2D, make sure you go up here in the gizmos and deselect 3D icons. So with the icon, you can view the name of the game object and easily locate it in your scene window. And if you go to the game view, you can click this button here to turn on gizmos, which will display the game object in your game view. You can also give it a custom icon if you really want to customize your scene. Click on other and in here you can see the list of all the images in your project and in here you can see the icon of our game object. This can be quite helpful, especially during level design. A game object always has a transform component by default and also has the ability to add more components. You can for example click this button and add the sprite renderer component which gets added to this game object, which enables you to display a 2D sprite. You can drag a texture into the sprite field, and now you can visually see the texture in game. This checkbox up here lets you enable and disable the game object. If I disable the game object, all of its components get disabled. So in this case, you can see the sprite disappearing when I disable the game object and reappearing when I enable. So let's look into what we can do with a game object through code. Let's make a new C -sharp script and name it my game object script. Inside, as you can see by default, this class extends the mono behavior class and has the start and update functions. A class must extend the mono behavior in order to be used as a component in a game object. The start function runs as soon as the game object starts and runs only once. The update is called once per frame. So in order to test on our start in here, let's do a debug.log game object.start. Debug.log simply prints a string into our console. So let's go in the editor, select our game object. And in here, we can either click at component and locate our script, or we can simply drag the script onto our game object. And now the script has been added to this game object. Okay, so let's run the game so far. As you can see in the console in here, it is displaying gameObject.start, which means our script is correctly executing. All right, so now that we have some code running, let's try to dynamically create a game object. So on our start function in here, let's simply make new game object. Let's run the code and see what happens. As you can see in the hierarchy, we have a new game object in our scene. This is the game object that was created through code. All right, now let's modify it. So in here, when constructing, we can give a argument for the game object name. So let's call it my new game object. And as you can see, the game object has been created and has the name my new game object. Adding a custom name to your dynamically created game object is very useful for easily finding it in your scene. Okay, so now let's add a component through code. So first let's store a reference to the newly created game object. So game object my game object equals the new game object. So using the reference to my game object, let's use the function add component, and we're going to add a component of type sprite renderer. This will add the sprite render component to our newly created game object. So in here, as you can see, we got the new game object, and you can see in the inspector, it has the transform, which is always spawned when you create a new game object, and it has the sprite render component that we just instantiated. If you already know what components you're going to need in your newly created game object, you can add them in the constructor like this, type of sprite renderer, and this way is much better for performance. And as you can see, the result is exactly the same. There it is, sprite render. Okay, great. 
So there you have it. We covered what is a game object and the many ways you can modify it both in the editor and through code. Game objects are the base of everything you see in a Unity game, so by understanding them you can now begin to experiment with components by looking into the default ones and making your own. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.